now here what can you see if you compare the right hyla with the left hyla what happened this is the concave orientation or configuration of the right hyla this is normal what happened over here here it is concave but again here it is convex and somewhat showing speculated margins so these are the basically the lymphadenopathy along with some tumor then don't forget when you are seeing the chest x-ray don't forget the bones always look at the bones this is the right clavicle and we have already described the rotation the distance between the spinous process and medial end of the clavicle the posterior ribs and then the anterior ribs the scapulae so all these things you need to see so here what what's going on there are discontinuity and fractures multiple fractures of the left ribs and then comes the humerus you need to see or check the corners of the film always there must be some hidden pathology over there the acromion the acromioclavicular joints the glenoid cavities the prescapular knot axillary border of scapula then what's going on don't forget the spine by looking behind the heart seeing behind the heart so here is an scoliosis of the patient the thoracic scoliosis in which which is centered at the mid thoracic vertebra which is uh, showing concavity towards the left so all this because of the scoliosis the ribs are showing crowding on the left so then again don't forget to see the clavicle uh, as we have described the clavicle fractures are being depicted and always look at the basis of the lung below the diaphragm to see the pneumoperitoneum or anything any abnormality which is which is causing the abdominal pain or which may radiate to the chest so patient may present with the chest pain due to abdominal pathology so don't forget to look at the abdomen below the diaphragm so here again a patient here you see what's there is free air under the right and left hemidiaphragm so this is a pneumoperitoneum which is an acute emergency patient must be settled uh, or may patient must must be rushed immediately towards the surgical department another patient in which you need to see what's wrong here that there is an excessive amount of air within the soft tissues intermuscular planes of the soft tissues so basically this is in subcutaneous emphysema so these are the review areas you have to check the apices the hyla retrocardiac the heart behind the heart there must be some hidden pathology sitting behind the heart mostly the media sternal or maybe the left lower lobe collapse or under the diaphragm now coming to the common chest emergencies so the pneumothorax the most important uh, emergency which we routinely encountered so here uh, the deep sulcus sign is being uh, evident on this x-ray so what's uh, if you compare um, the left side with the right side air is striking down the costophrenic angle and costophrenic angle has reached a bit uh, lower down as compared to on the left side so this is a very pathognomic sign for the pneumothorax so what happened uh, usually patient uh, we are dealing with pe peds patient so patient is unable to stand so what happened patient is lying down so air is a lighter medium it usually trickles or uh, accumulate along the right uh, cardiophrenic angle adjacent to the uh, uh, this is the pleura this is the lung lung surface lung is being displaced towards uh, laterally and the air is trickled uh, medially so this is again a presentation of a pneumothorax in children and uh, how would you confirm that you may cause uh, you may uh, you may ask the patient to sit in left lateral decubitus position so what happened again air is a lighter medium it will go up so here you can easily discriminate the ear or confirm your pneumothoraces and this is an adult patient and uh, for the sake of understanding i put it here this is the collapsed lung and uh, the excessive amount of air this is the uh, deep sulcus sign again uh, and there is shifting of mediastinum towards right so this is a tension pneumothorax again a big emergency patient must be rushed to the surgical department sorry uh, chest department then comes uh, this x-ray here you see easily uh, the collapsed lung left lung and then excessive amount of air free air within the pleura 
this is another tension pneumothorax this is air this is a lung and here intubation has been done tube is sitting within the parenchyma its repositioning is suggested there is a mediastinal shift ett is also seen placed left in uh, on the left lung there is a big consolidation with air bronchogram now coming to the pneumomediastinum here the air is seen within the pneumomedia medi within the mediastinum this all streaky amount of air lucencies are seen within the mediastinum on both sides and also trickling along the pericardium within the neck region the axilla all the way around so this is the pneumomediastinum uh, so here I ha and we have already described about the thymus which is a normal entity in feeds here what's wrong basically th this is again a sign of pneumomediastinum that is an spinnaker uh, or angel wing, wing sign the air is uh, surrounding this thymus on both sides so this is uh, it is uh, mimicking just like this spinnaker and th what happened here that uh, pneumopericardium air is surrounding the uh, heart and it's seen within the pericardial sac so it is causing compression effect over the heart the tamponade effect so patient may have muffled heart sounds or some serious kind of emergency then don't forget to see the foreign body and don't sus don't forget to suspect the foreign body in each and every x-ray of the child whenever you see the discrimination of of densities on both sides one side is more blacker one, one side is less then always always think of foreign body so how would you confirm your foreign body so, uh, not all the foreign bodies are radio opaque some are radio opaque they are that are easily seen but few are radiolucent most of the time they are radiolucent the rubber the batteries the button and peanuts so most of the time they are radiolucent so what happened how would you confirm you can confirm these by expiratory view you ask the patient to expire expire out so what happened the air being trapped on on that side in which the foreign body is present so here the foreign body is on the right side and here the foreign body on the left side because the air has been trapped on expiry view but in children basically what we can do the expiry views are not possible because the children are non-cooperative so we can ask them to again do a lateral decubitus view now uh, here the foreign body is on the left side so we ask the patient to s lie on a, in a left lateral decubitus view so what happened air is during a left lateral decubitus view air is being tracked outside normally but here air is trapped here this is the normal side air has been tra uh, tracked outside and this is the normal lung but uh, on the abdominal side air is being trapped inside there is a ball valve phenomena air is being coming in and it's not going out it is being trapped then comes the pleural effusion whenever you see the complete white out of the lung then most of the time about five liters of pleural fluid are present so pleural effusion is again a very important sign we can confirm it further on ultrasound and for uh, from ultrasound guided aspiration then we go for dr and then for uh, proteins spe uh, spe especially to look for the transudate and exudate coming to the pulmonary infections uh, now these are the radiographic patterns uh, recognition from uh, which forms the corner stone for the successful x-ray interpretation and the most common causative organisms are uh, viruses the bacteria Mycoplasma pneumonia, streptococcus pneumonia, respiratory syncytial virus, mycoplasma pneumonia in atypical infections. Um, the radiographic patterns are low bar, the bronco pneumonia and interstitial pneumonia. Low bar pneumonia usually involve one or more lobes, and bronco pneumonia is uh, the consolidation involving the PT and it's uh, centered around the terminal bronchioles. The interstitial inflammation is confounded within the in alveolar walls, the interstitial spaces. This is the bronchopneumonia. Here you may got the pechi infection, and across the lobe, and here the complete lobe is involved in case of lobar. And uh, this, these are the um, um, diagrammatic illustration for the pathologies of the lung. The consolidation it can be in the form of mass and a nodule. 
nodule you you have a smaller size as compared to mass there may be some lung collapse which is labeled as atelectasis there may be some interstitial thickenings due to pulmonary edema the pulmonary hemorrhages or maybe some alveolar pretinosis or malignancies then the cell head sign this is very very important sign normally there is a contrast between the air filled lung and adjacent soft tissues like uh, heart and left hemidiaphragm when air is replaced by abnormal fluid the pus cells or inflammatory exudates then this interface is lost so it is representing as silhet sign and it's a very handy sign for localization of the pneumonia so let's describe what happened here here you may not see the left heart border just because the consolidation is sitting in lingular segment of the left lobe that's why the left heart border is being silhouetted by that consolidation here what happened left heart border is normal but the left hemidiaphragm is not well defined as seen on right just because of consolidation sitting in the left lower lobe so because of this consolidation in this way we can localize we can localize the consolidation where it is here it is in lingular segment of left lung here it is in left lower lobe so let's see an example this is a 10 years old female with fever and cough what happened again the left heart border is not well seen left hemidiaphragm is well seen so again this is a consolidation in lingular segment then this, this is a diagrammatic representation of another patient this is a eight years old one week of fever and cough so what happened left hemidiaphragm is a bit uh, hazy as well as the left uh, heart border so again the consolidation in both left lingula and left lower lobe here the right heart border is obscured or silhouetted so what happened it is in right middle lobe which is being uh, very well seen in the lateral view uh, the oblique fissure and the right horizontal fissure are being uh, it is confined the consolidation is confined by right horizontal and the oblique fissure now what's wrong wrong going here that th th this is the left hemidiaphragm the normal left hemidiaphragm the right hemidiaphragm is completely gone and uh, left heart border is there so it means uh, this consolidation excessive amount of consolidation is sitting in the right lower lobe here this is the right horizontal fissure so consolidation above the right horizontal fissure is always in the right upper lobe you can also confirm on the lateral view and uh, this is a classical bulging fissure sign which is seen in clapsilla pneumoniae there is excessive amount of pus is being uh, secreted by this organism and you may find uh, the convex uh, right horizontal fissure rather than this is the normal position and then comes the air bronchogram sign which is a tubular outline of airway made visible due to filling of the surrounding alveoli by fluid or inflammatory exudate so basically this is a patient of rds uh, intubation has been done this is a neonate which is which is preterm what happened the both lungs this there is a surfactant deficiency so what happened the both lungs are whiter the opaque hazy opaque and they, these this is the air within the bronchi which is seen so this is called air bronchogram sign another example what happened there is a lobar pneumonia left upper lobe and left lingular pneumonia and all this these are the whitest opacities are consolidation and air is seen within the bronchi in a linear fashion in a branching pattern so this is an air bronchogram sign again air bronchogram sign so radiographic now discuss the radiographic features of bronchopneumonia multiple small nodular and reticonodular opacities which tends to be patchy and confluent these represent areas of lung when there are patches of inflammation separated by normal lung parenchyma so this is a classic example for the bilateral non-segmental consolidation in lingula this is the lingula and the right upper lobe perihilar you may see these are the linear shadows these are the nodular shadows multiple kind of shadows this, so this is not a lobar variety this is bronchopneumonia which is most commonly seen in viral and a few bacterial pathologies so again another patient of bronchopneumonia the confluent um, parenchymal consolidation with diffuse bilateral pulmonary involvement then comes the interstitial pneumonia as i have told you this is the in thickening of the alveol there is a th thickening of the alveolar walls and interstitium of the lung not involving the alveoli themselves so it may see, seen may be seen as a interstitial thickening uh, as the linear reticular markings in perihilar hilar region here you may see 
and this is most commonly seen in the mycoplasma pneumonia or maybe the pneumocystis gyrovisi like infections the mycoplasma pneumonia uh, this is a case which shows ill-defined opacity in left lower lobe here you may easily appreciate then comes again another patient you may see these are the bilateral perihilar reticular opacities more at the right lung base another patient of mycoplasma pneumonia you you may see these are the perihilar opacities then comes around pneumonia very interesting entity what happened uh, it is it usually simulate a mass lesion and the proposed theory behind that why it's occur in children because uh, children lack uh, usually children have underdeveloped uh, underdeveloped uh, channels uh, like uh, underdeveloped channels uh, underdeveloped inter uh, alveolar communications and uh, collateral airways so when they develop they allow air drift between uh, parenchymal uh, subsegments so infection dissemination dissemination occur throughout the lobe leading to a lobar pneumonia so uh, usually uh, due to lack of this uh, uh, these channels um, the infection is confined and it is uh, depicting like a mass it doesn't show sometimes the air bronchogram really it happened up to the age of eight years so here is a good depiction of the round pneumonia there is a rounded opacity which can be mistaken for a mass but it remember this is a round pneumonia so don't be uh, don't uh, follow this patient after having a, an antibiotic course then this is an another patient having round pneumonia then comes the lung abscess whenever you see an effluent level within a cavity uh, in a lung always think of lung abscess and don't forget to get an additional view of lateral view to confirm whether it's a lung abscess or empyma and then another thick walled cavity showing air fluid level uh, again uh, multiple um, reticular nodular shadowing multiple page consolidations so this is uh, again a lung abscess sorry now finally the tuberculosis uh, which is very important infection and endemic uh, situation in our country location that is a primary infection can be anywhere in the lung in children whereas uh, there is a predilection for the upper and lower zones in adult post primary infection have a strong predilection for the upper lobes because of oxygen tendency of this bacterium then comes the miliary tuberculosis which is evenly distributed through the both lungs we have three radiographic features or patterns the primary TB, post-primary tuberculosis, and then comes the miliary tuberculosis. The primary tuberculosis consists of the bone focus, which is a tuberculoma, granuloma, casetting granuloma. Usually it is calcified along with the lymphadenopathy. Here you see this is uh, the hyla, bul bulky hyla, the convex outer margin, and this is a consolidation um, as we just uh, discussed in earlier. So this, these are both are called the bone focus. You may find these granulomas also in this patient. Uh, another patient of primary TB, the same thing uh, are being depicted. Then comes these uh, granulomas, the, the rounded, lobulated, soft tissue densities within the chest. The most st striking finding, especially in children, is that of ipsilateral hilar and contiguous mediastinal paratracheal lymphadenopathy really right-sided this pattern is seen in over 90 percent of cases of childhood primary tb pleural effusions are more frequent in adult calcification of nodes is seen in 35 percent of cases when a calcified node and a bone lesions are present the combination is known as renke's complex so this is again a good demonstration of a well-defined rounded soft tissue partially calcified seen in left mid zone and uh, it is a again it's not not a malignancy it's a bone focus then comes the post primary tb the hallmark of the post primary tb is the cavitation you have to see the cavitation and it has a tendency for oxygen uh, more oxygen uh, dependent parts like posterior segment of the upper lobe and superior segment of the lower lobe so the typical appearance of post primary tb is that of pg consolidation linear and nodular opacities cavitation is 40 percent of cases with endobronchial spread which is showing the twin bud configuration on the CT. Now here you see this is a, a granuloma in the left upper lobe showing internal cavitations. So this is hallmark of, and it's in the upper lobe, so this is hallmark of post-primary TB. 
Then comes the miliary pulmonary tuberculosis. It represents the hematogenous dissemination of an uncontrolled tuberculous infection. It is seen both in primary as well as post-primary. So these are mostly 1 to 2 mm randomly scattered nodules with no zonal predilections and no calcification. So this is a good de depiction of the miliary tuberculosis. Here you see the fine, very fine nodularity. It is randomly scattered in both lung fields, no zone is spared and there is no zonal particular predilection. Now finally, don't forget the novel coronavirus as we it's a current pandemic situation. We are all having um, this this situation we are all uh, facing this current situation so uh, usually it present uh, as multifocal consolidations in the peripheral distribution posterior and peripheral this is the posterior of the patient the spine is seen this is the anterior aspect of the patient so this is the posterior predominance posterior lateral and peripheral predominance you see the peripheral predominance of these consolidations so this is the classic appearance of the corona so my take home message is better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher. Thank you so much for your attention. Your questions are welcome.